Good evening. Uh, thank you for joining us today on a Wednesday night uh, youth Bible study, um, a joint service with the Amen group and the La Liberty group. Um, we have a wonderful uh, service plan. Brother Lynn is going to give a fantastic, uplifting message that he's prepared so long. Uh, so without further ado, please uh, stand and allow me to introduce the La Liberty Worship Band. So ladies, go at it. needs compassion, a love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a savior, the hope of nations. The mountains, my God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. As you find me, all my, all my fears and failures, and fill my life again. I give my life to follow everything I believe in, and I surrender. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Shine your light and let the whole world see We're singing for the glory of the risen King Jesus, shine your light and let the whole world see We're singing for the glory of the risen King Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. And stories of what they think you're like But I've heard the tender whisper of love In the dead of night And you tell me that you're pleased And that I'm never alone You're a good, good father It's who you are it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. I've seen 
many searching for answers far and wide but i know we're all searching for answers only you provide cause you know just what we need before we say a word you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are and i'm loved by you it's who i am it's who i am it's who i am you are perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways to us love so undeniable I I can hardly speak peace so unexplainable I, I can hardly think as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still into love 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 you're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. Everyone, please close your eyes and bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you that we're all gathered here and that we all got here safely. Please be with the ones that couldn't make it today. And also um, for the sermon that Brother Lennon is going to be um, saying that you give the wisdom and the knowledge do him to us, and in your name, Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you, girls. Great job, by the way. Okay, so it's good to see you all this Wednesday. And for those who are joining us, we thank you as well. So if you could read what's been uh, on the slide, we're going to talk about the challenge of change. And when you mention change, there, sometimes we can think about the good things, but we don't think about the pains that come with change as well. And so, Because change can be very difficult, whether it's changing the habit, an attitude, or job, our city, change is always a challenge. And change is even more difficult when it's imposed on us suddenly or without our approval. And so, if we go to the next slide, this kind of sums it up. Change is very difficult, no matter how you think about it. Whether it's change, so, for example, God forbid, some of you might have a change in health. As we age, we're about to go through this. Or maybe in your personal life, you might have a change in your relationships because of a theft or a divorce. There is always an element of pain and, and change. Even when the change is for the good, like when a new and better job in a new city means leaving friends, and familiar places behind. This is painful. This is, for this reason, people naturally avoid or put off change. Because they want to avoid the pain that usually accompanies change. Of course, we know that not all good change, not, we all know that not 
all change is good. There are some changes, or many changes in life that are both painful and sad because the change that takes place is for the worse and not better. And then there are changes that change nothing, like people changing careers, as mentioned, only to find out their new jobs don't make them any happier than their old ones, their old ones. Or even same things in relationships. We think we're we're seeking out new relationships only to find out the we we earn for our old relationships back home. So whenever no matter the scenario, change is very difficult. So the lesson in this is that it's not about the kinds of changes that were I just mentioned, but it's more about the challenges that that positively changes. And within these changes that if we find the positive that, that it creates, meaning that the changes that creates within the positivity of this other side of change. And that how we can meet where we can meet these and how we can overcome the negative aspects of these. So the way we can find this through, of course, the biblical examples of change. Now the Bible is filled with stories of people who have experienced the pain associated with change in order to receive the blessings that positive change brought into their lives. So we go to the next slide. We have first example. The first example in the next slide is Abraham. So we read in the story in the next slide, we'll be reading out of the book of Genesis. If you turn with me, uh, book of Genesis chapter 12. Verses 1 to 3. Okay. So we'll just keep it there. And before we get into scripture and before we continue, I'm going to say a word of prayer real quick. So we just bow with me and let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for just this time that we have with you. Not only with you, but with all of us as, um, as we gather here. And I pray that you alone, that you speak through me as you're giving me this time to speak your heart, Father. I pray that um, any time that I come up here will be, first of all, glorifying to you. Please provide me with the, with the grace, the wisdom, and just know that I will do my best to convey your words, even though it's not perfectly said or or maybe not even perfectly explained, but I just pray that the points will be understood and that, above all, that you be glorified. I pray this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. So if we read along, in Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3, it says, The Lord said to Abram, Go out to your land, your relatives, and your father's house. To the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse anyone who treats you with contempt. And all of the people, and all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Okay, so just by a little glimpse of by a little glimpse of this. This verses that we just read. Note that the change that Abraham Abraham had to had to make left this country to go to a foreign land that he didn't know. Does that sound familiar to a lot of us in this room? But look at the pain that's involved with this this change. The fear of living in a different culture, language, and traditions. The pain of leaving relatives his home, his friends behind for good. And there was a risk of living, leaving the security of his home for an unknown place God was sending him to. But if, we, if we're familiar with the story and read on, we know that what comes after of it. Look at the blessings that are associated with the change. His family and his friends, well, his name and his family would be great. God will give him many descendants. 
the world would be blessed through him. And Abraham considered the change and examined the pain and decided that the blessings were worth it. Today, Abraham is called the father of all those who have faith, as Paul said in Galatians 3.7. You don't have to go through that, but, you know, <clears throat> but that's just an example. Again, change can bring a lot of obstacles. It can be very difficult, but if we're led to this change, you feel like God is really tugging on your heart to make this change in your life. Know that, yes, there will be some pain points along that, but know that he hasn't led you astray to fail. So know that any path you go through, you feel like God has ordained you to go, to commission you to go to that, through that path. Know that he's not setting you up for failure. So, all right. so another example we can look through, we go to the next slide, it's Mary. And the verse we're going to read through, if you turn with me, is out of Luke chapter 1. Verses 26 to 38. So this is going to be quite a read, so be patient with me. And for the people in the back, this extends to two slides. So, all right. <clears throat> okay, so Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. As it reads, In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town called, town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man named Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came to her and said, Greetings, favored woman, the Lord is with you. But she was deeply troubled by the statement, wondering what kind of greeting this could be. Then the angel told her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Now listen, you will conceive and give birth to a son. You will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. Now Mary asked the angel, how could this be, since I have known that I have not any sexual relations with a man? The angel replied to Reply to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the, the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. And consider your relative Elizabeth. Even, even she has conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month for her who has called childless. For nothing will be impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, said Mary, said Mary. May be done to me accordingly to your word. Then the angel left her. Okay. And so, again, we talk about change. Look at the change that God put before her. She had to change her concept of what God could do, which was, again, without having to state so many times that she conceived a child without, while being a virgin. Of course, there will be a lot of pain involved if she accepted this change in her state. Not just the suffering associated with normal childbirth, but also the possible loss of her reputation and future husband. Also, the fact that she would always be, quote unquote, different. She would always live with the knowledge and experience that no one else could fully understand. After all, how do you share your feelings about the miraculous conception of a divine being? Who could relate to that? She faced the pain of loneliness in her future life because of her special experience. But God, oh, I'm sorry, but Mary also saw the blessings attached to this, to this change. For one, she would have favor with God. A special favor not given to another. She would be the mother of a king, the Messiah, the son of God. Mary changed her mind of what God could and couldn't do. And God blessed her in a way no woman has or will ever be blessed. So this change from Mary is more of a change of a mindset. 
for many of us, we may have to go through this in, in our own lives. Thinking one way was the right way of thinking all this time, but been blindsided by uh, um, uh, uh, another side of a perspective that, that challenges that. And so, and you'll come through that in your Christian walk as well. People you may talk with may challenge you on your, on your, your ability to defend your faith, maybe. And so, and these are conversations that are hard because you may feel like you're not well equipped to defend yourself. But, and so, from if anything can, can, can be learned from this, it's really just a mindset of change, especially if you let God uh, control that change in you. And so, and, and so, we'll go to the third example, the change. So, this next example from the Bible is the, the rich, the young rich ruler who's aside with Jesus. And so, and uh, this is an unknown ruler, but as so, well, this is an unnamed ruler in the Bible. This young rich person doesn't have a name, but there is a story about him. So, if you turn with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 19, verses 16 to 22. Matthew chapter 19, verses 16 to 22. All right. And so it reads in verse 16, it says, just then, just then someone came up asking him, Teacher, what, must, what, what good must I do to have eternal life? Why don't you ask me about what is good? He said to him. There, are, there is only one who is good. If you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. Which ones? He asked him. Jesus replied, Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor your mother and father, and love your neighbor as yourself. I have kept all these, the young man told him. What do I still lack? If you want to be perfect, Jesus said to him, Go and sell your belongings, give to the poor, and you will have treasures in heaven. Then come, follow me. When the young man heard that, he went away grieving because he had many possessions. Okay. So, so note the change that was facing this wealthy young man. He had to change his value system. He valued the law and one's ability to obey it. He valued money and the security and prestige that it gave him. Jesus meets this man and challenges him to change his core values. From being self-righteous, derived for obeying the law to righteousness that will come from believing in him. From the comfort and assurance that wealth provides to trust in Jesus will provide for him. This is, these are the changes that this young man had to confront. The pain that comes along with this is that, is that he had to come to realize that swallowing his pride and, relation, and allowing his relationship with Jesus to be the thing that makes him perfect was not the ability to know and obey the law. Also, the pain one experiences when you have to rely on someone else for all of your needs instead of yourself. There, are not, there were not things that caused physical pain, but the psych psychological and spiritual discomfort of these things were very great. And yet, there was a great reward to be had for making these changes. Jesus personally asked this young ruler to come and follow him just as he had personally asked James and John and Peter and Matthew, who all changed their lives, their beliefs, their jobs, in order to follow Jesus as his disciple. I believe this man could have been a disciple if he had made these changes and followed Jesus. 
We could have been reading one of, the, one of his gospels. We could have been talking about the miracles he performed or the churches he planted. But instead, he will always be remembered as the one who went away from Jesus. And it's sad because he wouldn't change. We may know many people like this. And so, and, and if they're in your lives, continue to be in their lives as much as, you, as much as you can. You may be the only presence as far as having a godly presence in your life. And they may need you sometime down the line. So here's the challenge. If you go to the next verse. So this is the challenge. We read about these three examples from the Bible about change and how difficult it could be and the pain it may, may bring as well. The challenge is not really to focus on the pain or even making the decision to, to, to make the change, change. All the discussions about change brings us to a change I like to challenge each one of us with. So the change I would like to lay before you concerns our faith. So here's the challenge. I want you to decide if our faith is going to be a part of us or if our faith will become our lives. So there's two ways of looking at this. If we have a faith a part of our lives, this is more of a hobbyist mindset. It's like things you do on the side when you have free time. I'm getting back into... uh, I'm getting back into my old hobbies of, 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 uh, of sports cars and whatnot. But then again, that's more of a hobby. I don't do it 24 hours of my life. And so that's one way of looking at faith. But if you look at the other side of faith, where faith will become a part of our lives, this will fully encompass everything in our lives. The faith that we have in Jesus now will touch everything, every aspect of our life. Only if we let it. But, but that's the challenge, though. Can we, let it, can we let God infiltrate every aspect of our lives to be fully, completely a part of our lives and not just be a part of our life? So when, far, when faith is, a, is part of our lives, we control it. When faith is our life, it controls us. So, for example, when I did give an example, but yeah. Um, so, when faith is a part of our lives, we do we do just enough not to feel guilty or or to keep our membership active in the church. But when faith is our life, we can't do we cannot do enough for God. If that makes sense. As in every change, there is pain connected with this kind of kind of transformation. The pain that comes from removing yourself as the focus of every decision and making Christ the one that you live for. There is also an inconvenience of making Jesus and this church a priority over your career, your, whatever you do as your hobbies, or even family at times. There is also the uneasiness we feel when we unplug ourselves from this world and its cares and its riches in order to pursue the kingdom of God as our first priority in everything. And of course, there is an embarrassment we may feel when others begin to mock or even persecute us as zealots because our, our belief system has become our lives. People don't mind if religion is a part of their lives, like a hobby, as I stated. But they get, ex- they get upset when it becomes our lives. Why? Because it, it threatens them. Oh, but there are blessings that comes to us when we make this change. There are some examples of that as well. So I won't read all. I won't read all the verses, but I'm just this is uh, referencing referencing from verse. First example out of Matthew five six. Blessed are those who are hungry, and and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Only those whose faith in their lives are hungry and thirsty for righteousness, that they will be satisfied. When your faith is your life, you are at peace with God. 
and you're satisfied in the deepest regions of your soul. At a second Timothy four, seven to eight, it reads, I have kept the faith. In the future there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Now this mentions Paul in a sense to that his life was his faith. And when he faced death, he was absolutely, absolutely assured that his place where his place was in heaven. When your Christian faith is your life, you are actually able to see and taste heaven here on earth so that you will have no fear of death or even leaving this earth. And out of Acts 4.4, 4, it reads, But many of those who have heard the message believed. The number of men came to be 5,000. So, but many of those who have heard the message, they believe. And the number of those men who believe came out to be 5,000. When an entire church is filled with people whose faith is their life, the impact on the communities are tremendous. So again, just taking examples from these, from these biblical um, examples, from the people we just read of, and from the verses that we just, uh, just spoke of, the challenge still stands. How do you examine your faith today? Is it just going to be a part of your life, or will it be your life? And so that's something we really have to dig into deep, and I urge you to do it today. For those who are watching, please do the same. So, um, so as we move forward, please ponder on us. Please pray about it, and may God be with you. So, um, I'm gonna close this out in prayer and dismiss. So, Father, um, again, we just thank you for this time. Thank you for the opportunity for me just to share your word, to share your heart, and to really just maybe for a lot of us, maybe for some of us, give us a gut check about our own faith, our own relationship with you. If we really examine our lives in a 24-hour period, are you just a part of our life, or are you, our, are you completely, completely our life? We have to really question that. And how we have to examine the, the, the amount of change that will overtake if we fully commit to make you our life. But even when making that change, we know that you don't set us up for failure. Father, we just pray that for those hearts are speaking out to you that could be, re be ready to make that decision. I, I pray that you hear them, Father. For those who are ready to make that decision, I pray that you hear us as well. And so as, as we part today, we just pray that um, this is something to think about, something to really consider as we move forward. And I want to lift up everybody here as we're going through the week, whatever we're going through. No matter um, what we're doing, I pray that um, through it all that, that you be a part of it. We feel your presence and that you guide us as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all. Thanks.